mag ano. All right. Okay, see you later.
All right, um, good afternoon, everyone. We are so happy to welcome everyone for today's author and author webcast. My name is Sharice Aquino Tugade, Executive Director of the National Book Development Board. And hi, I'm my, my name is Brian Ocampo. I'm from the MDDB. Author on Author is a monthly program under this year's Philippine International Literary Festival. It features acclaimed creators exchanging their stories, experiences, future plans, and projects. All right. How are you, Brian? I'm good. How about you? Super excited for today. Oh, my gosh. Um, all right. So today's session is entitled Branding a Nation, Stories, Images, and Result. The spotlight will be on our two guests who are renowned big figures in their respective fields that shaped and enabled us to gain better insights on Filipino identity and how it is understood and appreciated by the local and global audience. We will try to cover as much as we can on their experiences growing up, mentors and mentoring, career milestones, creative processes, and their views on nation building and nation branding. Later, we'll set time to take a few questions. Okay, all right. But before that, we have rules. Okay, so for the questions, everyone, please type in your questions on the Q&A box. If you are on Zoom and if you are on Facebook, just type it in and we'll try to get your to your questions as soon as we can. And again, um, this is a place of open conversation, but we encourage you to respect everyone. No, bully, no bullying. And if you're going to be mean, we will kick you out. Um, um, also, because we are all online and we are in the virtual space, there might be some times that, you know, the internet can bog down. So please bear with us. So guys, it is with great honor to introduce them to you today, our special guests. The first one I'll call on is actually my Tito. No, I'm just kidding. No, we're all the same surname, so we're not related. I'm introducing you to Dr. Ambeth Arocampo, sir. How are you? Hi, sir. Hello. Hi, good afternoon, sir. So I'm going to introduce you, sir. Okay. Uh, Ambeto Campo is a public historian, academic, cultural administrator, journalist, author, and curator. He is best known for his uh, writings about Jose Rizal and Philippine history through compilations of his weekly columns in the Philippine Daily Inquirer, publishes two best-selling books, the Looking Back series and Rizal Without the Overcoat. And copy ako niyan. Which was awarded the National Book Award for Essay in 1990. Ang tagal na. Since 1986, Ocampo has published over 44 books on Philippine history, arts, and culture. His latest book, Yaman, nako, gusto ko to. Yaman, History and Heritage in Philippine Money is about the Philippines' rich numismatic heritage. Sir, welcome pa. Good afternoon. Yes, looking forward. Yay, all right. And our next speaker, we have the the ad man, Mr. David Guerrero. Hi, David. I was muted. Hi. <laughs> How are you, David? Very well. Okay, David. all right. I will I will introduce you. So David put his name on the door of BBD. Oh, Guerrero, Manila, when it opened in 1998. Oh, that's, that's the time mm -hmm. I was born. Just kidding. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. And since then, the office has been one of the most consistently awarded agencies in the region. In 2013, the authoritative gun report ranked it as one of the top 50 creative agencies in the world. Among its clients are j, &J Pepsi, FedEx, and of course, the Department of Tourism. Um, the More Fun in the Philippines campaign created a new national craft catchphrase within days of its launch. All right. He's also the son of Leon Maria Guerrero and published his father's biography of a series aisle titled The First Filipino and the Noli and Philly in English Translations. Here, Brian has, ha, has the books with him. Um, he Good also boy. published the LMG Anthology by Guerrero Publishing, which collates various materials about the life and works of his father, including newspaper clippings, photographs, and essays by the subject. So are you all ready to begin? Okay, let's do it. All right, so um, we've compiled a couple of photos um, and we do want to share it with our guests. Um, we all know, I mean, you guys have done such amazing work in your respective fields and we are, we're, we're super fans, um, but we want to know a little bit about your childhood. So is it okay if we pull up some photos of you? <laughs> Exciting. Okay. Okay. okay, who is this kid? 
Okay. Ang ganda naman ng mommy, no? Um, Don't be distracted by the oh, sorry, sir, dating ha? cap, di ba? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, sir, where was this? Um, obviously, kayo, kayo to, sir, sir Ambeth, no? So, where was this? I don't know. I, I just found it in the file. One of the few things that were left after Ondoy. Um, I'm glad my sister scanned most of it. So, this is one of the few things that's left. But Charisse found some nice pictures of me in... Expo 70 in Osaka, <laughs> but she didn't share them. Anyway, this is the one my okay. sister sent uh, recently. Um, this is in UP Integrated School. And we were both laughing because um, this is my mother sort of coaxing me to, to talk. And uh, it's kind of uh, amazing because now I live by speaking, uh, either by teaching or lecturing. So this is a bit of a prefiguring, although I have to learn how to tie a bow tie like Benito Legarda no? um, and use it since he's not around to, to do that so anymore. Tawa, so yeah. <laughs> great, great. Sir, a question lang. Uh, is this a, okay. um, this is a family reunion? Uh, are you forced to sing? Kasi kalimbita, pag family reunions, you're forced to like perform or anything. Ako, no, no. This is actually the UP integrated school. No, most, people, most people don't know that I'm actually a UP Diliman baby. Um, oh. Was made oh. and conceived in Diliman. Uh, my father was a professor there uh, at the engineering department. So the, the big joke has always been, yung matandang o kampo, ma mabait yun. Yung anak, walang ya. Diba? So, uh, Maybe because of the the way that I would teach in uh, my my uh, my Rizal course. I mean, just to let you know, my on the first day of school, which anyway I'm not going to do it anymore. I would uh, there was a particular Rizal textbook I didn't like, so on the first day of school I would show it to the class and throw it out the window. No, and uh, everyone will gasp because you're you're not supposed to treat books like that. No, but you made a point. No, and of course when when the students leave, I go downstairs and pick it up so I can throw it out again the next semester. Yeah. No no sense giving more royalties to this person. But uh, uh, because of that, you know, many people, especially in the education department, felt that this was not the appropriate way to teach people about books. So here we are now talking about books. No? So anyway, yeah. Later, sir, we'll, we'll go into that much more, sir, later. No, But yeah, thanks for, for, for that. Okay. Uh, Next photo. Okay, okay. Right. Who is this baby so is was this taken in front of the Ayuntamiento in Intramuros. No, where was this? <laughs> this is in London. It's in London. Oh. In Singtown. It's in London. Yes. And um, I guess just to make the point that I was born in London and uh, lived half of my life there uh, before coming over to Asia and settling in the, in first Hong Kong and then the Philippines. Okay, so. Yeah. Um, that was, that's been my life's journey, is traveling, I guess, from west to east. Um, and this is some of my childhood. <laughs> yeah. This is me uh, going to school. Uh, this is the, the little square uh, that is, it was in front of our place there. And then, yeah, uh, slightly blurred, but that's my, that's my first football team, five-a-side yeah. football team. I uh, was the uh, captain there. You can see me wow. in the middle, a bit blurred. Do you still play, sir? Do you still play? Uh, I, you know, we played actually in the Adobo Cup, which is the the tournament for advertising agencies that's uh, organised by my wife actually. Uh, oh. And um, we are now uh, we have had a team there most uh, every year, but uh, I only come on as a you know substitute, a substitute. When, when, when we're already winning. You know, if we're already <laughs> winning, or if we're already losing so much that it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, normally uh, just cheering from the sidelines. Okay. Uh, we have another photo of you. Let's pull oh, it up, Grant. Oh, wow. there. Yeah. I think all Asian boys encounter or Southeast Asian, you know, like that, that kind of haircut. I think everybody <laughs> went to that face. That's a Beatles haircut. <laughs> Beatles haircut. <laughs> it, actually, yeah. it is, yeah. it is, isn't it? It's, uh, it's, it was, because... it was very fashionable at the time. Um, and I was, I was certainly growing my hair as long as I could when I was uh, between the age of 12 to about 16 or 17. And then at that point, I, just, I wanted to cut it all short. But, sure. um, but this, at this time, this was, this was the laid back um, late 70s or sort of mid 70s uh, when this picture was taken, I think. And um, this, this, was in, this was in Mexico. This yeah. was in the 
Philippine Embassy in Mexico. And you can my... see Marcos and Imelda Marcos in the yeah, back. Was, huh? was, that was the era. <laughs> yeah, wearing yeah. their all their medals. That's the state yeah. visit to Bang to Bangkok. You know, so yeah, they look royalty there. Wow. Well, right. yeah, they're wearing their sashes and their breast stars. You know, so wow. quite interesting. And we, we, we show this photo because we would like to talk about, you know, the mentors that you've had. And um, I was like reading about your you and your, your relationship with your father because, sir, naki, you know, naki, nag-research ako ng konti, sir. Eh. Um, May sigat. Yeah. I, no, I, th I think... Yeah. I mean, nothing better that I like to do than to go to my father's uh, office and sit on the visitor's chair and let him tell me stories um, about his life and his friends and uh, you know how he used to, at that time, he used to get all the Manila newspapers coming in one sack in, in one go, because there was no internet at that time. So he just got mm. actual printed newspapers and he used just to go through them all and um, start with the obituaries. He'd always start with the obituaries and say, ah, <laughs> oh, so-and-so is gone. You know, there was always someone <laughs> Dying, yeah. <laughs> he could talk about. Um, so that was my introduction to um, his world and, and you know, his um, the stories he told about the Philippines. And, and he was a great storyteller, I think, to the, to the point of this talk. I mean, he was a consummate storyteller who would always be looking to tell great stories about the Philippines and, and trying to uh, tell the Philippine story abroad. That was his whole career you know one, once he once he left the philippines at the age of 39 he spent the rest of his life uh, Traveling, telling yeah. the story of the philippines to people overseas but i think sir you you, you came in uh into the philippines i think when you were 18 and at the so you, you, yeah yeah that's true that's 18 true. years old and then you set up uh you know your your company at the age of 37 you know, so which kind of remarkable yeah. if you think about it uh, well i um my incentive was that, uh, you know, I had to find something I could do to come back here with. And um, so I had to, I had to learn, learn a trade that could, be, uh, that, that could bring me back. And, and it happened that I developed a love for advertising. And actually, again, my father uh, also loved advertising. This was one of the things that I, it may not be too obvious uh, from, from all the writings about him, but he used to... Uh, admire various ads and uh, read them out to me. And so somehow he got me started on that trail, um, interestingly. Great, great. Yeah. Um, how about you, Ambeth? You you have a couple mentors. Um, you shared some photos with us. Can we see the photo, Brand? Yeah. Oh, the oh, link. The link. <laughs> the link. It's, uh, yeah. link. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> Leon Maria Guerrero's sister, you know, um, uh, who, who actually started me off uh, on Rizal because she, of course, as you know, she married into the Rizal family and later to the Bonifacio family. So in in one person, you have all, all, all the major heroes, or both major heroes. But she lived with Maria Rizal before the war. Mm. So uh, that's how we started. She, she told me the stories that Rizal's sister told her. No? And she was telling me that um, you know, at the time, uh, people were laughing at the little old lady saying, why, why are you listening to her? She doesn't know what she's talking about, etc. But I mean, because you're an in-law and you haven't heard the stories before. So she sat and listened and uh, passed this on to me. And much later, uh, we, we both worked in the Manila Historical Commission. And when I became chair of the historical, uh, National Historical Institute, then, I mean, it was it, she was the founding chair, so we we shared uh, we shared um, a love for history, and uh, unfortunately, I could never write either like her or like her brother. Um, she would often, you know, after reading a column, would call and say, "You know, your columns have to be stronger, etc." Yeah. So I try to do that all the time, but uh, always unsuccessfully. Sorry, sorry, it's a long. No, it's Okay, then of course, there's on the left, you see Doreen Fernandez, who was my English 11 teacher. Um, she was the one who really got me into 
things Philippine, and she she really got me writing. Um, the, I, I guess the reason why I wrote was um, she couldn't understand why I was flunking all the grammar. So one day she she sat me down and said, you know, can you look at all the grammar? And I said, I don't even know what the gerund is, you know, so how can I pass? Then she says, I'll give you another test. So she gave me a test and she says, you correct the mistakes. And she says, how can you get this perfect if you don't even know what an adverb is? And I said, you know, it sounds wrong. Uh, and then she says, okay, in that case, you won't do the grammar anymore, but you have to write an essay for me every week. And wow. I guess that's the way I wrote. I mean, if she had pushed on the grammar, I would have flunked and I wouldn't be an, a writer today, you know. Uh, the people on the right are the, after Doreen, uh, my biggest influences are uh, Emilio Aguilar Cruz uh, and Teodoro Agoncillo, both members of the Historical Commission. No? So Aguilar Cruz was the one who, you know, made me love food, made me curious about things Philippine. Okay. And it was meeting Agoncillo that gave me academic rigor, um, who showed me what real research is and um, how to document it. And maybe that's what led me into becoming an academic later. Okay. And then we have one last one, Hilda Fernando. I have many. I am, these are the people uh, who stand out. Um, she published books, uh, believed in my writing all the way till the day that she died. Uh, always wondering, saying you've been writing for 40 years and wala ka pa rin ka paris. No? Um, I mean, sometimes all it takes is uh, a good word because all these people could have shrugged me off or been nasty and uh, your life would have changed. So, I mean, uh, mentors come at the right time. They, you, I think mentors and mentees find each other. Um, and this is it. I've been, I've been quite lucky. As Brian was saying, most of my mentors are people you will see on Filipiniana yes. books no? uh, in a Filipiniana yes. section. Absolutely. So I was, I was lucky in, in, in that way. Um, I, I miss some people like David's father. I would have loved to have met him, but um, I did very well on 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 that. And if they if they like uh, you had one that was your teacher, but the others, I mean, how do you how did you approach them? Was it you had worked with them or you read about them and you? Well, uh, Abe Cruz, I interviewed for a term paper. So he gave me in 15 minutes everything I needed for the term paper. And we talked for the next three hours on all sorts of things. No, I, and I mean, that was it. No, His son built a restaurant empire, No, Larry Cruz, Cafe Adriatico. Uh, he used to say that while I, he was busy making a living, Ambeto Campos spent a lot of time with his father. So uh, we would see each other every day. I would drive... Uh, Agoncillo, I just met at the book launching. I didn't even know who he was. No? So we chatted for, for about an hour. And when he left, I asked uh, Sol Reyes, one of my teachers, who was that guy beside me? He says, that's Teodoro Agoncillo. And I said, Agoncillo, the historian, isn't he supposed to be dead? You know, um, And that's why. Then he says, you know, uh, I, I don't receive visitors. And they screen my visitors. Here's my phone number. Tell them that I told you to call. And so I would visit him at the last six months of his life. You know, I would arrive at three in the afternoon. The first day he was in bed with an oxygen mask. You know, and as soon as his wife left, he sat up, removed the mask. And we talked till 10 until the wife sort of stood in the doorway and gave me the signal to go. So I, in a sense, I think it was a crash course. Uh, he wow. gave me what he thought I should learn about Philippine history. And that's in my book, Talking History. You know? uh, it's basically my historical education came yes, two, three months yeah, with him. Yes. I have a question to Sir David. No? Um, what, how, how, like your mentoring style no? and um, what, a, what piece of advice you know, do, do you still use or does it apply to you today? Like, um, yeah. I'm very I curious. Think it's, no, I think it's, it's fascinating uh, hearing that story, uh, the stories from Ambeth about his mentors in history. And I think, um, I mean, just to talk about that a little bit, I mean, it works the same way in advertising, I, I feel. It's, 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 not a, it's not something that is, uh, that has, um, you know, exam boards or qualifications mm. or, um, you know, certificates or anything like that. It's, it is, it is a, it is a profession that is passed down through, or you know, is it? It is very much uh, dependent on who you work with, 
and you learn as, as you do it and you get inspired by the greats and you if you're lucky you get to meet them and you work with them so I think that's 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 that was my experience and I I, I didn't uh, send you those pictures necessarily but there, but there are a bunch of people in advertising mm. who I owe my career to as well and, and I think uh, you know I think we as Amber says, we find our mentors, our mentors find us. And, um, and I think when it comes to your question of what, how do I um, approach it, I, I really just try to be as positive as possible. Because I think, you know, I think what Amber said about, you know, one word can make a huge difference. And, and just, you know, words of encouragement, uh, you know, just even you forget how much you can convey belief in someone just yeah. by just by giving them the you know my father once said uh you know because i started off writing articles for magazines that was my first attempt before advertising i was writing you know uh stories about you know the, to, to submit to mabuhai magazine and things like that you know in mm -hmm. pal and, and um and uh, Jingle Magazine and oh, yeah. uh, the Inquirer, you know, and all of that. And, and, and <laughs> he, he, used to, he read some stuff. He said, look, you might as well submit it. You know, you're, you're kind of like, I think his words were, you're no worse than the people in there. <laughs> 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 that, was, <laughs> that was the, you're, you know, you're, you, you might as well because you're yeah, no worse so. than the people you're, yeah. you're, you know, they're in there already. So, so that was enough encouragement for me to say, oh, you know, he, he thinks I can write. So I'll, I'll, I'll try writing, you know, so that was, and you forget just you forget actually how much power your mm -hmm. your your encouragement can have you know and it can really give someone enough fuel to go on mm -hmm. and and i think we are always looking for encouragement as writers even now we we need constant feedback and encouragement yeah. otherwise we we don't go on you know we we have it it takes it's a lonely job and you need to feel that somebody is reading and somebody is is appreciating what you're doing, yeah. um, which is why I think writers and social media are kind of I don't know whether it's a marriage made in heaven or hell actually, but but, <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> but yeah, with social true. media you're getting instant feedback the whole time and and you may not want it. That's in, and in, sometimes in, the feedback isn't as nice as it should be, you know. Um, but, uh, rarely, uh, yeah, <laughs> rarely is it nice. But, uh, but I mean, it's true. I mean, like for me, it was Abe Cruz who who brought me to the uh, Weekend magazine, uh, got my first article published, and that gave me a job. When when uh, the newspaper closed, he took me with him to the Daily Globe. That's where I first got my my column. Um, he actually thought up the, the column looking back, you know, uh, in just the same way that he did Julie Dasa's Medium Rare, Blas Opless, uh, I don't know what the title of the column was, but he opened, he opened those doors, you know, and, um, mm. you know, because you can write, as, as David was saying, you can, you're probably much better than others that are there, then uh, once you're in, then, you know, it becomes uh, one thing leads to another. You know? I, mean, I, I, I mean, for example, I used to write, and that's why my early writing on history was, you know, it, people say it's trivial. I mean, because mm. I, uh, I wrote my, the person who sat beside me in Weekend Magazine was the late Ricky Lo, the entertainment writer. You know, we would race to finish our copy. And uh, that's when I realized that, you know, you, you really have to make your writing. I mean, if I wrote history the way other people wrote it, no one would have read me. But uh, I learned to featureize it, to, 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 make, to make it in such a way that you educate and you entertain at the same time. Uh, so in the first in the first few years, I was writing for a lifestyle section until the, the late Leti Magsanok said, why are you in the lifestyle section? They should move you to the opinion page section. I said, I don't want to be, be beside Renato Constantino. He doesn't smile. No. Uh, and then she says, uh, how can people take you seriously if you write a serious column and your column appears beside a picture of Dolphy? No. Um, so I think she sort of moved strings. So they moved me to the opinion page and eventually she made me move to the inquirer. So, uh, and that's how it is. There's uh, the, the, the historical column, although that was invented by David's father and, and his aunt and, and Abe Cruz, uh, it, it didn't, I mean, they wrote feature things, but it wasn't 
a real column. I mean, Mrs. Knockfield wrote a real historical column. And I sort of wrote, about, wrote it the longest time. And many people used to say, it's very odd to find a history column in an opinion page, which is basically current political events. You know? So I was basically the, the clown on the page. But uh, I guess you provide some well, entertainment you know or diversion so well you know well, well reading your columns uh, yeah, sorry a fanboy no but when i read your columns you know I, i got entertained and it got me to dig deeper in you know our history you know, i think that's a good bait you no know? um once you give like a piece of information you try to become more inquisitive yeah. about about what really happened you know? so well, that's the, well that's the thing i mean mrs when the, well in the beginning of course the academics used to bash me before i became an academic um, and uh, mrs nakil used to say you know uh, just keep it up because in my time it was encarnacion alsona so you have these people don't don't mind them just continue what you're doing you have a different audience you know? so which is what i always say you know people say ambeto campo has no framework he has no foot no what can i only write 700 words in an opinion it's not a doctoral dissertation so you have to shift gears you know? and uh, mm. you have to see that you know uh, nobody reads my academic work no one has read my rizal bi bibliography for example no uh, but i also you know, do that kind yeah We, so you're saying that you became you were a writer before you became an academic yes yes and that's that's really interesting and that's and that's that's good i mean I, that's um because i think i had the same realization when i when i went to university and did my first degree in england and i and i came out of it thinking okay i know this stuff and all these people around me in the streets don't care about it yeah you know, and, and all these things that i know <laughs> all these things that i know about uh you know third world development or i don't know the, the political system in europe or something nobody cares and and you know and so so how do you make people how do you actually and that, that's again what yeah. led me to advertising because how do you communicate information to people in a way that they care about and, yeah you know, and that's that's the bigger question I, i think you've you know you're obviously doing that as well uh by putting the audience first right so you're you're saying I, i i care i care if the audience reads this yeah or not you know i'm not i'm not writing for just three people in a university in a journal will read yeah. it yeah <laughs> nobody will read, it. read and it that's the thing i mean why i won't write for the converted which is why i don't write for journals or write for conferences because there's no sense writing for the converted uh, you might as well try to not convince but to persuade a general interested audience to mm. see that there's some value in Philippine history and that Philippine history isn't what their text but I mean that's the usual uh, comment you know I didn't read this in my textbook I wish you were my teacher I uh, history is about human nature it's about life so it should entertain it shouldn't be boring so if it's boring that's I, I keep saying then a you'd had a bad teacher or B, you're reading an academic journal. So they're, yeah. they're two different audiences. So oh, oh, well. I think I mean I think and history is live and very uh political in in the world right now. I mean I'm just I'm just in just looking at from the UK, for example, when statues of um ah, yes. are being, Be, being thrown in the street. river, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh you know, and, and that is people i mean people walked past those statues for years without thinking who that guy is up on mm. the statue and then one day somebody said that guy was a, a bad was a, guy was a slave trader and yeah. he made his fortune by shipping people from africa to america you know and that's you know and then Ooh. yeah let's let's reevaluate this show we mm. <laughs> so actually it's uh, one of the know. one of the yeah. things i found very shocking during the years of the centennial there was a tv interview of mm. uh, a vendor underneath the Bonifacio monument in Tondo mm. and the interviewer asked this cigarette vendor who's that guy in the statue and he says scratched his head and hindi po ako tiga dito eh. hindi ko alam sa I mean you're li you're literally selling literally in the shadow of Andres Bonifacio's statue and you didn't know who he was you know um I think I that found, was didn't yeah. didn't we do that as part of the Johnny Walker part thing? of the Johnny Walker yeah, yeah. Walker. we will yeah. be showing that link <laughs> yes so. So when, Amit, I have a question so when you first started doing this um when was the shift when you you started writing for newspapers um and then you started 
producing all of this these books and your first book we actually have a photo ah uh, yeah was, um, uh, the first book was actually well Teodoro Agoncillo used to warn me not to follow the Guerrero example. Uh, <laughs> and that, and for me, that was it. He was saying, you know, Chitang and Leone were great writers. He says, but you know, if you don't, if you keep writing newspaper columns, you will not do the long one. But I mean, Leon wrote first Filipino, but he says, you know, when you get used to writing 700 words, you will not be able to write. Uh, a long thing, 700, which, pages. 700, 700 pages. pages, which is why I think when I went to England, that was my my big lesson. No, um, although I didn't finish my my PhD there, my supervisor let me write, and then he says, "I just want to see that you can argue in fifty pages." That's it. No, uh, and once he saw that, he says, "You know, you can." His biggest frustration was knowing that I could write the dissertation in six months if I wanted to. But uh, you know, a British degree, a research degree, we don't have class. So mm -hmm. I spent three years in the in the British Library reading all sorts of strange things, and I just keep telling people my real education was the three years that I read in the British Library. No one can take that from me. No? But anyway, going back, my mm -hmm. first books, most of my books are usually newspaper compilations of newspaper columns. So. Uh, Teddy Loxin, Teddy Boy Loxin used to say, you should write a real book, you know, not just collections of things. But this was the easiest to do. So the result without the overcoat was the first one. And then we started doing thematic things. That's why we had Luna's Mustache, Mabini's Ghost, Aguinaldo's Breakfast, until book. I ran out of heroes to name my book. So it became generic, you know, uh, looking back uh, series. But um, I still hope that one day I will... I will write a big book. I haven't really written a big book. So How about well, Yaman, sir? I, my praise, my present book, uh, yeah, Yaman, Yaman yeah. is yeah. is my most. It's the heaviest book. Literally, it's three point two kilos. No, you oh can't my. bring you can't bring it to bed. Um, <laughs> but it's but it's a luscious book. I mean, I think you don't even have to read my text. You just have to look at the pictures. Now. Um, when when I was working with Anvil, I showed uh, I showed Karina Bolasco the Facebook analytics. I said, "Look at this. We know what age my readers are, mm -hmm. where they live, what their language is." And she was saying, yeah, "You know, if I I pay a, a company to do this, I said, yeah, what is the sampling size? One hundred. This one is a hundred thousand. So because of that, we made this very small book. We realized that." Printing a, a very small book was the most economical way. And I said, a book should be the price of a Jollibee meal. Later, we settled on a, on a movie. So in the beginning, the books sold for less than 100 bucks, wow. and, uh, which was nice. And then I, I mean, I'm Chinese, so I sort of know how to market. Unlike other authors, I actually market my own book. So I packaged it in such a way that I used to give Ayala Museum lectures to... You know, we would have 700 paying people on a Saturday until the Makati Fire Department declared me a fire hazard and limited our audience to 300. No, but we would have 700. And what I would do would be every year, I would make two of these books. And on a lecture, we would launch. We would launch there. And it came with the price of admission. And I used to say, you know, how many, if you just look at the, an, a normal book launch, you will rent a venue, you will you'll pay for food, and how many copies will you, will you sell? And I said, here you have 700 copies sold on the same day. 700 people will tell another 700 people that you have new books. And so this went very well. So I think now we're in number, looking back 15. You know? um, so... <laughs> And wow. doing, doing doing very well. No? So these are most of my. I mean, Rizal is my favorite character. Uh, so most of my books uh, are on him. Uh. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, but let's talk about yes. sir, so, uh, sir, sir, sir David. No, I have been looking for this book. No, and uh, when it first came out, so because the cover is so it's beautiful. Iconic, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> stylish. I will wow. have to, yeah, I mean, first of all, uh, this was a, you know, a long project because I, I, I inherited a lot of, um, my father was a very good record keeper. He, he kept all his files, he kept all his pictures, uh, but there was 
I, I was also getting on with the business of making a living. So I, I didn't have all the time in the world to devote to this. And then, and anyway, over a number of years, I uh, worked with a number of collaborators. Um, and in particular, the book designer, Yodel Pei, uh, went through everything and found this picture and, um, and put it on the cover of, of the book. And then, and then uh, you know, suggested this, this quote to go with it. And uh, this then, uh, from the book, it was picked up by Esquire and who were doing a feature on, and there, uh, there was a five uh, cover issue of Esquire. This was put together when Erwin Romolo was, was editor and he, oh um, and when, and when there was a printed version, uh, but then, you know, so, so they had these five uh, optional covers and apparently this was the, the best selling cover. I, I'm not, I, I don't know if that's, yeah, but by what margin or whatever, but, but I think this, this idea. Yeah. Of, Very manly, manly. It, man. Well, this kind of yeah. coincided with the, uh, if you look at the date 2014, right? I think it's, it could have coincided with the Mad Men popularity. So, yeah. so there's almost this like, um, this, this, this iconic figure of. of Where was this photograph Madrid. taken, David? Madrid, but oh, this is Madrid. Madrid, near the uh, the palace, I think. Or, or hmm. the, uh, and um, I actually managed to track it down. I, I, I tracked it down. Yeah, Plaza oh, de España is where that building is. So yeah, it's yeah, quite it's, kind it's of pretty near. much still there. And I tracked yeah. it down, and I, I decided to try and replicate this shot um you should have a photograph in the exact <laughs> same place yeah yeah I, I i did but unfortunately my my figure was not quite as, you know, as, as <laughs> swell and, and, uh, i didn't have as a, a nice as, as nice Shoot. As it, so <laughs> didn't quite work and also i wasn't smoking either so so that's another thing but yeah this this is pretty iconic i, I had yeah. some some worries about the smoking thing, but I, I think <laughs> you, you just can find it. Too. Personal, but uh, you're not you're not a smoker, no, sir. You're not. A smoker. I was. The thing is, I I, I was, and, and like the zeal of a convert, I I am now extremely anti-smoking. So so I was, um, you know, back in back when I was uh, college, I was a smoker, but um, I then turned against it. So so yeah, I, I was a little bit. Um, uh, I was one wondering whether we should promote this cover, but I think you know it's a period piece in those days. Yeah. People used to smoke. It matches. Uh, don't do it now, kids. Don't. No. Smoke. In Madrid, <laughs> in Madrid, they still smoke. You know. So, uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we should. Uh, we we should definitely have a health warning on it. On it now. Um, yes. Yeah. And, so there's been um, there's a, a number of, hmm. of uh, editions. I mean, over the years, and and I mean, just the history of this. The First Filipino has written it for, as, as part of the biography competition of the um, Centennial Commission, Rizal, and, and uh, my father wrote it in about three months, he said, wow. you know, and it was, and it, but it was essentially based on, uh, and he's been, uh, actually Benedict Anderson said, how could he possibly have written it in three months? But, but actually, he, did, he, yeah. he, it was based on a lifetime of of information and i think yeah. if you have a lifetime of information coming into you you can force yourself to do something that big in, in that amount of time and he i think he later said if he had more time he would have made it a, bit, a little bit shorter i mean he thinks that even he thought the 700 pages was too much for someone to physically um hold while they're reading in bed but but anvil have done a wonderful job of reissuing this in in, in a in a manageable size done a size. New cover um Introduction by Amber Thocampo, you will, you, if you, if you uh, get your copy. Um, and then uh, two new editions of the Nolly and Philly are now out as well. I, I just grabbed these from the website just to, as a subtle piece of product placement. Product, yeah. To, to let you know. You can go to anvilpublishing.com uh, and um, they actually, I think they were kind or desperate enough to ask me to write the introduction to both of these as well. So mm. I've written a, a short introduction to, to both of these editions. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, that's been, these, these are the latest ones uh, over time. And I think on, on the next slide, you'll see over time, we've made it a kind mm. of- This is a so much better cover. I like well, this. Sorry, oh, yeah, it's also at beautiful, the, but I also at the, like at the Well, this, this, is, this is different because this is a two-in-one, Book so yeah. so essentially, 
the Nollies on one side and you flip the book over and the Phillies on the other side. Hmm. So, so it's, it's, it's the two volumes in one. And, um, and this was when we used to do it, uh, when we used to publish it ourselves or distribute it ourselves, uh, we, uh, I used to give it as a, a brief to any art director working in the agency if they would like to design the cover. So we've got about six or seven different cover designs out there, but this one was done by Brandy Tan, who is now um, executive creative director at Wonderman Thompson, another advertising agency. But he's, he's, um, and his, he's the brother of uh, Budget, the, the creator of oh, Tresco. Oh, guy, all yeah. Very, yeah. All very in the news right now. Um, but he's, um, so th this obviously talented family, talented brothers who, on right. this, yeah. Uh, if I remember correctly, sir, no, your your father, I think, worked in the five year period, no? Uh, you know, the biography of Rizal and the translation of these two novels into English. Am I correct? Yeah, I mean, that's that's about right. I think I think the again uh, the if you if I read you know uh, his correspondence with the publishers about that time is all about I need a bit more time. Can you extend the deadline? I need. To, <laughs> that's, that's always a bit. But he's 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 getting it done uh, within within these years. And again, it was it was because he was in London, and he wanted to get new English translations that would appeal to the audience at that time. Because so so he's he's been transplanted out of Manila, quite suddenly, really in. Uh, you know, at, at, at the end of the 50s. And he arrives in London full of energy, wanting to do his best for the Philippines. And, and so that he, he really throws himself into this work, uh, translating the Nolly and Philly, writing the first Filipino and, and really doing everything he can to raise the visibility of the country because he experiences firsthand that nobody in England knows where the Philippines is. What? He, he gets there and they say, Oh, where is it? Is it in the Caribbean? Is it in yeah. you know, Latin America? And you know, and, and they have no idea. They, they they don't know where it is. They don't know how many people are there. It's, it's a completely invisible country. He he says, "I I feel like I'm the the victim of an elaborate practical joke that I'm here and my country has disappeared while I've you know while I've been away." You know, so he he really um, feels firsthand that actually the and this is actually something that Mon Jimenez said many years later that that. That our problem is not good news or bad news. It's simply no news. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Most ignored. People, yeah, you're ignored. Yeah. Yeah. To come, coming back to the nation branding thing is that nobody has sufficient knowledge of the Philippines, whether it's in the UK, whether it's in the US, certainly at that time. Yeah. And still to some extent now. Today, uh, yeah. You know, that that's that's our biggest issue. It's branding. Yes, there is some negative stuff there. Yes, there's some, you know, um, uh, positive stuff but but it, but essentially it's 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 the invisibility that yeah. we tackle people actually ask me you know um how come filipinos don't speak spanish and you were under spain for 400 years you know they all presume you either speak spanish and wonder why we speak american no, i mean when I went to England, that was one of the things I had to get yes. used to my supervisors. You know, you write American. This is not English. Go out, get an <laughs> Oxford English dictionary. We have to fix your spelling. So I know I'd spell color with C-O-L-O-U-R. Uh, and after three years of that, when I when I started writing back in Manila, why is your spelling this way? You know, uh, it's all <laughs> wrong. You know? So I had to unlearn you have to use your... American there and then unlearn the British spelling here. It's... Uh, I yeah, you, you, you have to use your your MacBook. You know, your 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 computer has to be set to the set right. Set for to the yeah. right. Yeah, but at uh, that time um, we didn't have that yet. I was in London the nineteen ninety early nineteen nineties, so no spell check yet. No, so that was no. it. You're, 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 you're trying to move us on. I, I said, <laughs> sorry, sorry. You're, no, you're trying to move us on. Trying to compact everything because you know, like, <laughs> you, you just to show, uh, you know, like stuff more. You know, because a lot of people, if you check the Q and A box, there's like loads of questions there, and okay. you, know, uh, you know, I've right. been answering some of them already. Okay. So. Okay. You're, you're, you're very yeah, diligent. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, guys. So, um, okay, yeah. so we we want to know okay, your creative process. Well, what photo? What what? What is this about, this photo? Okay, well, this is uh, back in the day when we weren't all working from home and uh, we, we used to have uh, annual company outing. This, this was in 2018 and we all went to 
soul. As you can see, the, the hashtag solid. <laughs> Yo, uh, and, and we, <laughs> we you know, and yeah, nah. our word play. Um, yeah. and, and this was in, in that sort of park in Seoul where, where they have the sort of, I don't know whether they shoot the K-dramas there, but they, they seem to have a, all these kind of falling leaves and people yeah, they like know, that staring into the distance. So, so I, I just, I, I wanted to show this just to show that we, this is my, this is my work family. This is, these are the people that are normally here every day. But today, um, I came to the office today because I've had my double vaccination and, ah, but no. we are still, Oh no! We, we, Hi guys. We, we, Oops. we are still, <laughs> we are still, we are still all working from home. And, ah. and uh, this is, so this is my, well, I mean, the good thing is we can do this from the office and there's, there's no one disturbing me because I've got the place to myself. And this is my real family. This is, this is my, um, my wife, Angel, daughter, Kimmy and son, Leon, as well as, uh, as you can see in the foreground there, our dog Fender, family dog. Who, um, who is, loves coming out for, for pictures. He will, he will always uh, come out and pose for a picture. That's so nice. Yeah. Okay. Oh, now here you go. Wow. Sir, how many books have you counted? Oh, that's, that's very small. This is just my reference um, library. It's all Filipiniana, the things that I need for my work. Um, but uh, over the years, I, I, I've given books away. So there's 10,000 volumes in Holy Angel University in Pampanga because I wanted them to have a Philippine collection so mm -hmm. that their students don't have to go to Manila. No, My rare Filipiniana is in Kyoto University, very well cared for, air conditioning, etc. You know, when I went there a few years ago, all the librarians came down to see this relic because they said, you're the only person whose name is on the library who's actually alive. Nice. So, uh, <laughs> so they wanted to see, but uh, this but is basically- yeah, they still called me a relic. So this is this is my. Uh, but now I want. I'm, I have most of my books are in PDFs. No? So which is why getting rid of physical books is easier to me. I, I uh, one of the strange things about my life is that I'm actually allergic to book dust. Uh, it's one of God's uh, crazy jokes that He makes you allergic to the very source of your livelihood. No? But uh, so reading digital books is easier. But my problem there is I don't know how to file them. So I end up buying a book instead of looking through my files. But this is it. This is my... I think you've got a, you, you have an exercise bike in there. Do you, do you kind of bike and read? I just use it, to, I yeah. use it to hang my clothes. No? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I need an attachment to put my laptop yeah, yeah, or yeah. something. That's, yeah, that's, you know, so, that's, uh, so this is clean. Normally, the, the desk is full. Uh, my my father used to say I, I shouldn't put my books in because I live in a condo and he says books are very heavy. Um, and so for many years, I rented a, a house because I couldn't live in my condo. But, you know, I eventually I just moved in and said, you know, if it collapses, it will collapse on the person below me anyway. You know? So that's that's the workspace. Yeah, people are always inter interested in seeing what writer's workspaces are like so Actually, yeah. i mean behind me this is not a virtual background this is a real this is a real background and little freud is up there watching all oh yeah <laughs> Great, Today, I'm great. also interested in the background of sir david no um earlier uh we were talking about you know him being a beatles man and uh, I think this is a sir. Can you bang a zoom or no? It's a laptop that you. you uh, I I can. Well, I can try and bring yeah. it closer. Yeah. yeah. Can have a look. Let me, let me, let me see if I can do that. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. So what this is? This is pretty much the lyrics of the ballad of John and Yoko, mm -hmm. um, spelled out in jeepney signs. Okay? Jeepney so, signs. Yeah. Over the Isle of Wight, Gibraltar, New Spain. Uh, so so this is all okay. around. And in fact, this whole office is kind of themed. On, on the idea that the Beatles came to Manila in 1966 and they... They're going um, to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that we have a lot to learn from that, from that interaction between East and West. Okay. Um, I think uh, we're going to show some things with your permission, sir. It's okay. Um, because yep. uh, Ms. Mam Karina was like, uh, mentioning that I think we 
probably can show this. Is it okay, sir? I mean, yeah, this is this is uh, this is not the one she's referring to. I think it's not that, the, that's it, this one. I'm sorry, so the, the the one she's talking about was a headline we wrote for Nolly, which which said um, the critics didn't shoot down the book, just the author. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, that the was life of then. Jose Rizal. Rizal was born on June 19, 1861. When he was 21, he left home for Spain to study medicine, but ended up making his name as a novelist. He wanted to tell the truth about conditions in the Philippines, about how Spanish friars, bureaucrats, and officers ruled with unlimited power at a time when Filipinos as a nation were unknown in Europe. This led him to write the great Philippine novel, No Limitangere. It was published in Berlin with copies smuggled back to Manila. Like many writers, he wasn't aware of the consequences of what he had written. The book angered the powerful church, which meant he was not welcome at home. In 1889, Rizal also wrote two pieces for Solidaridad. The first article looked to the past, while the second to the future. He lamented how Filipinos seemed more like individuals than members of a nation, but praised the tenacity they shared with their native caravan. And because of this, he said, progress in the Philippines would not be stopped. All right. He started right. on his... Yeah, sorry, no? Because it's um, yeah. you know, we, we, we want to just show you know like the project they work together, but actually we're really about to show what they truly work together. Um, we collaborated together in this project, and yeah, we'd like to show this uh, mm-hmm. this uh, small mm-hmm. video that you guys made. Maybe Grant, could you pull the file? Yeah, that's just Maybe. thirty oh, seconds. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, no. Yeah, because we're just excited. That's why. Sorry. <laughs> ating heroes. Pero bakit ang nakararami? Lalaki? Matanda? Patay? Do I have to be dead to be a hero? What makes a hero today? I think um, first is they have the heart. They're selfless. Matapang. Nakakapagpasunod ng tao. May prinsipyo. Meron din kasamang ambition ang pagiging isang hero. Meron kang goal. Meron kang gusto maabot. Pag wala kang ambition, walang mangyayari sa'yo. Talino, uh, kakaiba. When I was uh, around five or six, my concept of heroes was someone with superpowers who would fly around. But, but when you're older, you understand better that heroes, they're us. They're you know, normal people. But instead of using superpowers, it's the way they inspire people. Iba ang definition ng, ng pagkabayani. My hero is different from yours. Yung bayani mo ay maaring hindi ko bayani. Pero dapat natin isipin, ano nga bang bayani sa panahon ngayon? Wow. Okay. So maybe we can grant. Okay. So, sir. Uh, this is a very good ad that you both made. Now, when was this? Was this two years ago, three years ago? Um, uh, twenty sixteen. Twenty sixteen. Says there, yeah. Um, innocent days. It yeah. feels, feels like a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, I think it was. Um, it. It's a global series by Johnny Walker to try and get um, you know tell stories about different countries, and and I think here we we landed on this idea of heroism and and yeah just we really really wanted to explore that uh, and as uh, as Ambeth says in the introduction uh, it's their old their male, male dead, and they're dead. dead yeah so <laughs> so, we, so <laughs> dead. um it's and it's hard to get it's, it's something in the culture it's hard to get people <clears throat> to agree on on championing heroes uh or even people to look up to on a, on a regular basis, and, and we, like we said, the 
in talking about the UK, there's always this, this annual, you know, sort of birthday honors list as the MBE, the OBE, and every year there's a bunch of people who, who are sort of held up as people who are doing something right or, or, or doing something good. And I think um, that doesn't happen so much here, or, there, or at least it does happen within narrow um, industries, perhaps you have, you have people that are called out, you have the outstanding men and women of the, of, uh, of the year and stuff. But again, it's, it's sort of a little bit unofficial rather than, uh, rather than a, a national award. Um, there's the National Artist yeah. Award, but, yeah. but again, how often is that done and, and how, how, um, how happy are people with how it's done? I don't know, but, but that's, that's the... Why do you think that it's not as, I guess, pronounced here as in, mm. in other countries? I mean, part of it is is the is just the traditions has not been established. I mean, I mean, we we forget Philippines is you know essentially granted independence in 1946. If 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 we set aside the, the first well, republic, yeah. but if we, we go yeah. from yeah. If, you, if you say 1946, yeah. um, it's not that long to develop a lot of institutional um, sort of traditions and 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 you know and, and things like that so so there's that i think there's maybe um there's also maybe there's a kind of there's a sense of collectivism in in the society hmm. which which means that people don't necessarily want to raise somebody up above the collective you know so there's i mean i think in 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 our societies generally we, we, we emphasize collective achievement collective ambition it's a, it's, it's a lot about you know um keeping about about making progress for everyone and i think you know there's, there's often a lot of resistance or there's this kind of you know the tall poppy syndrome or the you know otherwise known as crab mentality otherwise yeah. known as, you, know, <laughs> you know um people wanting too much attention you know but, but but there is a kind of um resistance i think to to championing people unless um everyone agrees on the criteria and i think you know sometimes mm -hmm. Some international criteria are agreed on. This is why this is why we value actually things like um, Oscars and you know and and Olympic medals and mm. uh, I don't know un, unimpeachable achievements from yep. the world yep. because then it's yeah. like okay you know somebody wins something. But, but that's the, the know, thing. But, yeah. yeah. I mean, I was I, when we were doing this. That's what we were thinking of. How come when people when Filipinos talk uh, heroes. They um, they always talk in the past tense. It's like you cannot find heroes today. All heroes have to be dead, and that's why in this we we showed three different heroes to show that maybe they're not they're not like Rizal anymore. They're not shot in the back in Luneta, but we still have heroes today. But they come in a different shape and form. So like they can be medical frontliners. It can be a community pantry. You know. So. Um, we, yeah. we have to shift gears and see that heroism is expressed in many different ways. Agreed. Yeah. I mean, in a sense, you know, you could argue that influencers are mini heroes, right? I mean, in, in the sense of yeah. who, who do people look up to, who do they aspire to be, who, whose opinions do they follow? Then, you know, if, if somebody was parachuted in here from 100 years ago, they say, well, you, you, your heroes must be these people on Instagram, right? Because yeah, you know, these, yeah. these are the people, or TikTok, because these are the people you're following, yeah. right? <laughs> these are the, these are, these are the, 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 you know, now, now, how much are we, you know, educating those heroes and influencers? I, I don't know, but that's, yeah. but that's, but that's the reality. <laughs> so YouTube, lang, sir, eh? na eh. they write their own history and, oh man. Yeah. Anyway. I'm not, going, um, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. I'm not going. There. You know, it's it's. I mean, I think we we have to acknowledge that you know, so, so social media is 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 a huge part of 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 life today, mm. and 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 I think and and the concept of followers and um is 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 something that heroes have. Heroes have followers, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that's one attribute. But I think are we are we aware of everyone doing the right thing? Are, are we aware of all the, the the possible heroes we could have? And that's another story. Um, so what, what do you guys think? So 
it, it is Rizal's birthday tomorrow. Oh, yeah. And, it is. Um, the, his relevance. What is his relevance today? You know, we're talking about modern day heroes and all of that. Is he still relevant? Um, woke. What, woke, what, what, woke. What do you think? I mean, I, should be writing about him. Should we, should we, should we start looking at other kind of, you know, figures in Philippine history and, and focus on them? Yeah. I, yeah. I think the, the look, the, the Rizal story is, is one that can continue to inspire every generation. I, I, I do think there is a, um, it's a complicated story because it ends um, with the with the Americans uh, crushing the revolution, you know that's that's the thing. I mean, Rizal inspires the nation to to rise up against the Spanish successfully, mm. and then in a kind of twist that no one wants to see, the the Americans come in and 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 sort of take over and and, and occupy the country for another fifty years. So, in terms of the, the bigger slice of history. It's more tragedy than, than you know. It, it, his, it's it doesn't um, immediately tie into the national story. Yeah. But, well, but our, think, you know. yeah. Our main problem with Rizal, and I keep saying this, is that his biggest um, Rizal's biggest misfortune was he became national hero, and a national hero for a nation that does not read him. Um, I mean, the, the novels are there. We're supposed to read them in college by law, but I doubt if people actually read him. And if they read him, they don't read him in the original. They read him in translation. Most, and I'm glad if you will read, say, the Guerrero translation, the Almario translation, but 90% of the time they're reading very badly translated um, Noli and Fili, which will make them hate the novels instead of make them uh, like yeah. it. So I, I keep saying, you know, to know Rizal, you have to read him. He left 25 volumes of writing. That's That was the main source for First Filipino. I mean, uh, but how many people will read the 25 volumes? Everything's there. Laundry receipts, uh, lotto tickets, yeah. um, his fight with Del Pilar. So he actually left, which is why I cannot write a biography because Technically, he already wrote it himself. So my my future Rizal biography, I've started it already, is in interview form. So I give a question and then I'll get a quote from, so that people will say, I am Beto Campos inventing this. No, everything will come from his writing. So uh, it's just a question of arranging it in that way. And maybe if we read him and get to know him, then we will actually appreciate, we don't appreciate him because we don't read him. That's the That's the sad part. Yeah, that, that, that sounds like a really good format, and I think that you know yeah. that's that's yeah. true to your roots as as a as a as an entertaining writer, yeah. and I think that's that's great. I mean, in terms of what I have done, and I, I don't know whether you can show that picture. We we yeah. uh, about ten years ago, slightly under ten years ago, I arranged for uh, an English audiobook. Oh of, yeah, um, Grant, could you pull out that one? Yeah. Yeah. and. Yeah. Um, I went to London and recorded it with Richard E. Grant. And Richard yeah. E. Grant is now an Academy Award nominated actor uh, for, um, for a film called How Can I Ever Forget You? But, but he, he's all, or How Can I Ever Forgive You, rather? But he's also been in things like um, The Iron Lady. He's been in uh, Gosford Park. He's been in Dracula. He's been in a bunch of movies, even the first Spice Girls movie, I think. So yeah. he's, he's a well known character actor, uh, originally famous for With Nan and I, and, and so he does a great job of reading British the book. Accent. Yeah. And, and he, he translates, he sort of transposes the accents of the characters from what would have been Spanish to sort of their English equivalent. English, yeah. So, so yeah. it's, because it was pointless him trying to do Spanish yeah, yeah, yeah. No, accents don't, 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 and things. Don't, so yeah. so um, after, a, after much uh, delay, I can, I'm happily, able to announce that it's available on audible.com audible, yeah. and uh, you can find it there and download it. And so you don't have to read Nolly anymore. You can listen to it. Yes. Okay. yes. I, so, I, listen, <laughs> I listen to it every morning now when I do my morning walk an hour yeah. every day, but it's 17 hours and so on. Yeah. 17 so sessions. In, in, in terms of a, uh, you know, that, that's one less barrier, perhaps. Uh, yeah. and, and, and that, but you're right, it's, it, it's a long book. And, and I think it, it tends to be, 
uh, treated, I mean, the Nolly and Philly in general tend to be treated as, as kind of sacred gospels. Yeah, which, like Bible. Which, but they, but actually they should be uh, more, you know, I mean, people, people should be playing a bit more with, I, I feel. And if you look at how, um, again, the English language or the English literary world plays with Shakespeare, it plays with, um, you know, I mean, you have Shakespeare plays transposed to modern times. Mm. You have Shakespeare reimagined. Mm. You know, so, so you have all they have all these most revered authors that are that people have fun with, and I think that's probably what needs to happen with Rizal to, to bring him into the twenty first century. Mm -hmm. Is that we need to take these familiar characters or these familiar stories, these familiar uh, elements, and then and then reimagine them either in fiction or in in non-fiction you know it, it through 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 new formats and and through new ways of of getting to it but but i think he's he's core to what defines the filipino identity so i, I think it's very hard to 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 imagine you know talking about the philippines without but but, but it, again not as well known as he should be and maybe philippine studies in general is not as big as it should be either that's yeah, the other, you know, because it's you didn't find it in England, I'm, I'm sure, Amber. There's no Philippine no. studies over there, and in America, all you, what you find is Asian American studies, yeah. which is yeah. which is not the same thing. It's it's interesting in its own right, but it's but not it's the not same. Thing. Here. It's, it's actually yeah. very strange that for a colony, either I mean, you, when you think of say the French studying Angkor or <clears throat> you know the British studying you know, Africa and India, we don't have that same tradition. I mean, the Americans had no Philippine school, the Spanish, there are some scholars doing it, but not in the systematic way that uh, other other countries study their their colonies. You know? so, yeah, I mean, the, the theory I, that I've read or in, 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 is that the Americans never wanted to admit to having a colony. Colony, yeah, that's it's, true. It doesn't go with the American brand. Yes. The American it's myth democracy. is that they were the colony that rebelled. They they were never the imperialists, yep. right? But actually, yeah. of yeah. course, they were. And of course, they were here and in Puerto Rico and in Cuba yes. wow. uh, and maybe Dominican Republic, you know, a few places where where you, where they, but they, they never wanted to admit to it. Yeah. And, and by the time they realized that Filipinos could enter the US freely in the 20s and 30s, they, they yeah. quickly said, oh, we better, yeah. better make the Philippines independent. Independent, because, yeah. So, they, so, they, so we can stop the Filipinos coming in. You know, so that was, that's, that's really, I think it's, it's the Americans were kind of ashamed of it. And, yeah. and that's why they've never, yeah. they, they've never um, embraced the idea of, you know, uh, we, I mean, Philippines gets no special treatment, I feel, compared to other Asian countries mm -hmm. in America. It's treated equally. Uh, there's a there's a book called um, America's Hidden Empire. I think it's America's Hidden Empire, where it's, it talk about Franklin D. Roosevelt on the eve of World War II uh, is re is writing his speech about the ja about how the Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor. The infamy. Yeah, and he says they've attacked. American bases in 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 Hawaii, like mm. embracing Hawaii as part right. of America. It didn't didn't become an American state until the later, 1959 yeah. or something. But but he's already. But the Philippines is, is where there were more American planes destroyed on the ground in the Philippines than there were in Hawaii. He he doesn't he doesn't mention. He says, oh, you know, there's the Philippines, which is it's not it, you know, it is not uh, taken in as as a as an American possession because. He knows that it doesn't play well with the with the yeah. with the audience. You know, they, they 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 don't like the idea of of the America being or yeah of, of the Philippines being part of America. So, well, some uh, people would like to be part, sir. Well, and they they they. they, they I, know, I know. I know. And, they want to be fifty like, <laughs> huh? first state. But um, but it, yeah, this is the this is the thing we. we I think there, there needs to be a sort of a reckoning or reconciliation with America in some ways to say, hey, look, mm. you did have a colony here and yeah. hey, look, we're, we're glad you don't anymore. You know, but but I think there is a kind of, you yeah, know, there, 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 there needs to be just an acknowledgement of what happened. Yeah, that's, that's the thing that we're looking for, actually. But they returned the bells. 
so you know uh, well, so. yeah <laughs> yeah this is... at least now they started to like, a little yeah but that's yeah, but think... that's one of the things that i you know every time i post something that i found in a library or museum abroad and there's always this uh uh, someone who will say, you know, why is that in the Phil uh, why is that not in the Philippines? It should mm -hmm. be returned. You know, I'm of two when when I I always answer those and I always tell them you don't know what you're talking about because mm -hmm. a if those things were in Manila, a they would have been destroyed during the war 1945 in the National Museum and the National Library. And second, you know, I mean like things like I go to the Library of Congress, all I need is suitable ID. And I can look at anything I want in the library. And I said, you know, you come here, re researching in the Philippines is very difficult. So they say, you know, why is this Rizal manuscript abroad? I said, have you ever tried trying to, to see the original Noli and Fili in Manila? You won't get it. You know? So um, it's, it's, be it's access, actually. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to think that, you know, many of these things, the bells or whatever, mm -hmm. we we will deserve to have them back one day, but at the moment, I don't I think this that. is the time. Yeah. Yeah, and I think there's there's two things about the I think something like the bells is is that one is them coming back, but the second one is when will that story be told in a powerful way? Yeah. You know, on on a kind of um, you know Netflix style budget oh, sure. where, where, where where you'll actually get. I have know, ideas. No? Besang Pass, that's a good war movie. No, Besang Pass might be a good movie. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. but for it to be made, you see, the problem is for it to be made it means putting, you know, the Americans in an uncomfortable Bad life. And, and, and that's that's why in these the things life. don't get made. Um, but it's, um, yeah, this is, in the end, it comes back to control of, of the memories. Well, um, moving along, no, I, I just need to, you know, like, um, Ask this question, you know, like um nowadays as a creative Sir David, you no, know, how do you proclaim your Filip Filipino ness, you no? Know? Uh, because we're always using the you know the national things like sampagita, all of the symbols. But nowadays, you know, um we have like younger people, you no, know, they want to say, hey, I'm Filipino without wearing the flag. Because sometimes you have yeah. to have to put all of those elements in for people to know, ah, that's Filipino. So, but all was... those elements were not are not were invented by national bookstore. That's sure. Nanay Kuring who made them into I postcards really and uh, and and posters that students see. I mean, you know, this national flower, national this, national that. Uh, I think there's only a handful that are that are actually true or accurate. No, um, so yeah, we have to we have to outlive that. You know that it's the tinikling. It is mm -hmm. you know uh, it's the Bahai Kubo. I mean, you yeah. know, in there there have been many debates over you know how what 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 is filipino and until now i think we're still Debate. very far from finding an answer no yeah i think i think for sure it's it, it's not about those you know those kind of cliched um imagery you know i think one thing about creativity Chris, we're always searching for for what's not been done before mm -hmm. and and one one way to make you know the work unique and interesting is to be as sensitive as you can to what's going on here and pick up on local culture and pick up on what's going on right now. And, and I think, you know, that's the way um, Filipino creatives, I mean, the, you know, the, and, and there are many who, who are very good, uh, are, are, you know, making original work by, by drawing on local culture, drawing on modern local culture, you know, the, the stuff that's surrounding them every day. Actually, we're and, showing right um, now your campaign, sir. I mean, uh, Charisse and I work in uh, tourism, and I, get to, I just have to say that this campaign really, you know, speaks to me because it is true. Like uh, being fun, you know, being F Filipinos and fun. I think those are like very we were lucky. Yeah, I mean, we, we were lucky that we had, you know, that again, we 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 didn't do any of this, and that the country did it for us, and we just, you know, provided the format, and then people filled in the blanks. I think that was great. I mean, but it, it, it is, um, again, one of the reasons for this campaign was that we didn't want to have to wait for everything to be ready or perfect before we promoted tourism. The idea was that you would just <clears throat> overcome problems, <clears throat> which would come because it's, it, somehow it's going to be fun, somehow it's going to work out okay, and somehow it's, it's going to be worth it because it is more fun. So, so that's, 
that was the um, mm -hmm. thinking. And yeah, I mean, it's it's it was an amazing experience to see how <clears throat> this was embraced. Uh, yeah, even time. up to now, sir, like uh, there was a debate to discontinue, but thank God that we, because we know that thing that that is also missing whenever we make programs like this, there's no continuity. And yeah. we have to stick with this one for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's well, we have to credit uh, the current tourism secretary for oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. and and um, and and, well. and her predecessor even. Yeah. Quite yes. Sorry, Manis. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. So um, we, we actually have to wrap up and start answering all these questions. We have oh, questions <laughs> that we're going to try to get through. Somebody, <laughs> somebody already commented that this should have a part two. But oh you know, my yeah. goodness, yes. Let's <laughs> well, that's very really flattering. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to answer these questions. Um, okay, so number one from Eric um, um, Bata, how have the folklore and myths of Jose Rizal in his uh, apo, I can't even say this, apotheosis, SDT, and etc have mm. contributed positively or negatively to the collective consciousness of the Filipinos in nation building. I'm gonna, is that question up here to read? Sorry. I'm okay, looking. I think yeah, it's in the box. Q&A box. On the Q &A. Like 32 it, yeah, is it near the top or the bottom? Sorry. The top, it's, on the, it's top. the very first. Oh, okay, 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 the first one. I, have you read it, Ambeth? Are you, are you gonna yes, take that one? no, I've answered. 30 you... out of the 32 already. Oh I God. left that I left yeah. that for you. Okay. So there's a, there's some for you like what is David's favorite Beatles. Oh, I like you, yeah, actually I'd like to know that yeah, too. Yeah. I'm a Beatles man. <laughs> but this sorry. is a hard question. Yeah, you I, could you, could, sorry, could you could you repeat it? I, 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 I can I, read I, it for you, no? Um yeah. how yeah, how have the folklore and myths of Jose Rizal in his apotheosis? pronunciation as deity and etc have contributed positively or negatively to the collective consciousness of the Filipinos in nation building Whew. okay uh, they understand uh, maybe it, sounds like, it, 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 it sounds like something for Amber's ne next book no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think folklore that's what he's trying yeah. to yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry you know um his name? I think it's, I mean look I, I think it's a great question I'm not sure I'm I'm ready to tackle that one yeah. right now. I, I, I think um, I skipped but, that and did 30 other questions. <laughs> you, need, <laughs> you, need a do, you need a doctoral dissertation for that. <laughs> All right. So, sir, it, 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 it deserves to be answered well, but I don't think we can do it justice in, in the time frame available. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so this person is curious. Um, you wonderful. This first, Sir Ambeth, you wonderfully balance your writing between the academic and the entertaining. My question is, do you find it a challenge to choose um, to draw a line between fact and fiction, or do you believe that it should be more like creativity should enhance academic writing? In this line of thinking, is it possible to reshape academic discourse? No, I mean, one of the things that I always, I, I envy creative writers, you know, novelists and short stories, because they can, they can go into paths that I cannot. I am, I'm limited by my material, you know, so I cannot I cannot go against it. I can comment on it, but I cannot twist it in a way that a um, creative writer will. So I'm constrained by the historical sources. So um, the academic writing is totally different. I mean, it's, it's made actually not to communicate, but to make things complicated so people will appear more intelligent than they think they are. Um, I mean, it defeats the whole purpose. I mean, writing is meant to communicate. It has to be simple. It has to be straightforward. But academic writing is a totally different um, animal. So you cannot put the, the, the two together. And then there's another question. Um, I have always wanted to write stories with a touch of Philippine history in them. However, so this is a question for both of you. I'm torn if I should write in Filipino or in English. I think writing in Filipino will help the story better reach its target audience, which is the mass. But at the same time, I'm more comfortable writing in English. What advice can you give on choosing a medium of language on writing Philippine literature? David? Well, I think writing is difficult enough to begin with. So, so you know, write in the way in 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 what you're comfortable in writing with. I I, I do think the writing honestly about this country probably requires a hybrid 
you know, a pro, you, I don't think you can write in pure English, yeah. probably. Mm. And I don't, you know, Maybe and I think English. you wouldn't want to exclude English necessarily. So I just, English. I, I, I was reading, uh, I mean, many, um, I guess, authors of color, authors of, you know, of, of non, um, you know, sort of English or American backgrounds talk about writing but not apologizing you know you, you you write and you you use terms that you use and don't explain them. don't don't feel like you have to put an asterisk under the to explain what a yeah. is, is or, or, <laughs> or that you need to explain you know uh carabao or you need to explain anything just just write everything and let people work it out you mm -hmm. know let, let people work it out or find out or you know i mean i, I think that's one one thing that there's a certain confidence now, I think, in people writing from, you know, the South or from the the former colonized countries, or whatever, that people are just writing in a way that makes them comfortable. And mm. and then, you know, you people are attracted to, you know, readers generally are attracted to a to a genuine and sort of authentic uh, narrative or, mm. or testimony mm. that you can give. So so just you know. Tell your story. Tell your story. Um, be as you know, right in in the words that feel right to you, and then and then I, I mean I, I, the only thing about it is is to you know obey the laws of every other piece of writing, which is that you have to write about ten times before you before you get it into the shape that you want mm. it to, and um, <clears throat> let other people read it, and uh, you know try and I mean if you want to be commercially successful i think try and follow the rules of storytelling uh have a kind of narrative arc to it have a you know have a have a beginning middle and end kind of thing and and uh, you know and, and it's interesting how history you know you think how can you do that with history well you, you you just have to choose your beginning and your end point right i mean you know you, you choose it <laughs> choose it so that you 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 end at the end, end, yeah. end you want to end at, and 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 begin where you want to begin. Uh, I think that would be, and then emphasize the things that you need to to tell your story. But there are some amazing books. I mean, I've been reading recently some some great books on storytelling that, that have just that can just bring it down to a um, almost a you know a, a sort of given structure, and then and you can put. You can sort of use that to shape your your thoughts. I make it sound easy. I'm not sure I've. I've, I've <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's thanking you already, Sir David. No, okay. thank you for the encouragement. No, saying yeah. Okay, and then this is for Sir Ambeth. Okay, this mm. is about teaching Rizal in high school. So the style of teaching Rizal in high school is teaching Nolly and El Fili chapter by chapter, which is a better way to learn about Rizal, especially yeah. for younger audiences and even for the one with the new college subject, life and works of Rizal. Mm. Well, as I, as I mentioned earlier, you have to read him to know him. Um, we approach the novels as novels to be read and to be enjoyed. They're not there you know, you're always taught kasi to troll and look for patriotic uh, quotations yeah. and totally. hidden symbols. I mean, that's not the way to do it. But if you read them and you enjoy them as novels first, um, and then the other things come in later, but they have to be enjoyed. They have to be read in order to be understood. And doing it chapter by chapter is not the way to do it. So that's basically it. Um, Sir David, there's a question here. No, are there any family anecdotes during the time when LMG was writing the first Filipino and even translating Nolly and Philly? I remember you mentioned about uh, going through letters from publishers. But yeah, yeah actually, my 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 mother wrote a piece in, and you showed a copy of Flip magazine, the short-lived Flip yes. magazine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. So my my mother wrote a piece for Flip magazine, which which. Um, talks about uh, the writing of the first Filipino and I, th I think um, uh, it's there. So, so I can, um, this is something that I need to be doing, which is, which is having a, uh, putting more of this stuff online and, and we will, we will do that. Um, but for now, that's, that's where it is. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure what I, if I can summarize that article in, in uh, <laughs> briefly, but, but that's, um, 
the main the main story was was that he was writing it in a hurry um, mm -hmm. that he wrote it starting at four in the morning uh, because he had no uh, he still had his day job to do as as ambassador and and he was he was um, got terrible headaches from from lack of sleep uh, he was doing it at a distance he was and, and again before the internet he was doing it um, sending uh, letters to people asking them to send things back asking you know so it's all un unimaginably slow Three uh, months. Uh, you know uh, but but it, and then and then uh, he also then um, submitted and, and Amber and I were talking about this uh, last week that he 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 submitted a a kind of defense or point by point sort of you know, explanation of some of the things that the judges were questioning and and so he, so it, it was it was thoroughly done um and uh as um as fully referenced as as you'd expect mm. so i think again the chat that was actually a, a one of those rare things which, which you have an academic a book with academic credibility that is actually pretty readable um you know and and well referenced and so yeah. and and it has it has all of the back up for what he's saying but he's saying it in a in an interesting and an imaginative kind of way um so and, and actually that, that was that was the... that was guerrero and um and horacio de la costa i mean you know that's one of the things that i learned from them when you go to the back uh, they write a bibliographic essay. They won't give you a list of the books that they read, which is what academics would do. They would write about, you know, why why we chose one source over the other. This one's good. This one is bad. So in a sense, you learn much more uh, instead of just reading a list. So they 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 did things in a particular a way that I think uh, most academics will not use today, but. Uh, if De La Costa used it in Harvard, then I guess it it should work, you know. But uh, it's a different, it's a different animal. This is the uh, the, the Jesuit education coming through. Mm. There. Yeah. It's yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So a couple more questions. Um, this is about branding. Um, how do you brand Rizal for millennials? And uh, uh, Wait, I have another one that ties into that. Why isn't Rizal as well known as Gandhi, et cetera? What must we still do in order to have this Philippine yes. brand better known globally? Right. Well, um, I think this is this 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 is part of the bigger issue of of you know Philippine culture and its visibility in the in in the Western canon, you know, the Western sort of viewpoint. So so you have, as we said, it's the Philippines is not particularly relevant to the British sort of set of knowledge because that's all centered around the yeah. empire, empire. And, and its aftermath. And in terms of America, where, where you'd think there'd be some connection, there isn't because it doesn't really wow. fit with their Colony. National, Colony. With their national with their national <laughs> myth. So, and then in the case of Spain, uh, and, and I'm not sure where, where the Spanish stand on that, I think they, they are sort of, in a sense, saying, well, a lot of this happened after we were kicked out, so, so you know, nothing to do with us. So, so I think there's no easy endpoint in Western culture, and, and, and it's up to the Philippines, you know, it's up to us, I guess, course, really yeah. us right here, right now, right. to do whatever we can to... Um, allow people to gain a greater understanding of of the Philippines and Filipino people and Filipino culture in whatever way we can and, 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 and you see this you see people doing it in in small ways and big ways and, and you know Ambeth is doing it for sure the guys who wrote Tresse are doing it you know people who yeah. are people who are just making contributions in their fields are doing little bit by bit efforts to to get more understanding about the Philippines and, and the more that we do it the better off we will all be yeah. I have my own personal crusade which uh, you know it, which uh, I have yet to work out how to do but there, there is if you notice when you go to Microsoft Outlook or mm -hmm. you go to any yeah. uh, you know sort of any website that has a time zone in it mm -hmm. there's there's there's, there's uh, Urumqi there is Perth mm. there is Singapore, there is Hong Kong, there is Manila. Taipei. There's a Manila. 
And and there's, there's no Manila, no Manila. In, 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 Manila the, yeah. in the plus eight GMT time zone, yeah. which is where we are. So, what the hell is that about? I mean, yeah, this, is, this is this is a city. <laughs> this is a city for 100 million. Of, <laughs> of 20 million people, uh, yeah. all of whom are paying subscriptions to Microsoft's yeah. office, and and you know are not are not getting the time of day. Yeah, literally, we're we're literally <laughs> not getting the time of day. Yeah. From, that's true from, you know yeah. that this is something i mean but frankly we let's start now small let's, one, but let's 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 start now let's start yeah. this campaign now we are going to get manila on on that yeah. list yeah. Of, whether it's in singapore of, or beijing uh, yes. yeah. it, it, it's not a question of they can have them too but but we but we need to we need to make sure yeah. we're visible there um I, yeah i used to wonder about that when i would watch you know uh international news and then you see the weather you know, I would always keep my breath because <laughs> is Manila still there or is There's Manila the, gone? You know, uh, or even for uh, currencies. You know that uh, that you know, what about currencies? What happens yeah. when the Philippine peso disappears? Mm. So uh, uh, yeah. these are the things. You know, it's that's, I mean, that's, these brand, that's branding. Yeah, yeah. These, these things yeah, are yeah, super yeah. important. Yeah, uh, agree. I mean, one of my one of my big beefs, and I I, I think so. I didn't get invited to Singapore's uh, president, and I I used I told the president of Singapore once. I said, you know, Excellency, Singapore stole our mer lion, you know. Yeah. And I said, uh, when you think of mer lion, you think Singapore. And I said, you know, 1598, Philip II gave us that mer lion. But we had it, but we didn't use it as a brand because para ay, it's a no, it's a Spanish colonial thing, etc. Oh, so now Sing Singapore has it, and we lost our merlion. No, so things like that. No, um, that's a great story. I don't, I don't even know. About that. Yeah. We still have the beer. We still have the beer, sir. It's okay. Well, San Miguel beer. You still have the merlion, but. Singapore already they branded it no and that's only 1957 Singapore Tourist Board um, all they need is the Chris and it's uh, it's actually armor lion no? but uh, <laughs> they said you'll never you have no future in the diplomatic service <laughs> yeah uh, anyway all right, right. so uh, yes. we're, we're over time now, guys so we're, we're over time now already yeah because it's okay. originally like one hour and you know we've yeah. been talking, you know well also, it shows you that at least we we end where people still want to hear more um yeah, we had fun oh, this was, this we was, had fun thank you so before much we, before we wrap up now because we also would like to know your future projects and we were talking about it you know in our earlier discussion maybe you know like um you can share it to the people watching. Yeah. Well, uh, okay, you first. Okay. Uh, well, mine, mine is is you know not a secret. It's it's, it's a long term project, which is but it's one that I'm actively engaged with now, which is to really explore the story of when the Beatles came to Manila um, okay. for all the reasons we've talked about now. Just because it was a moment when Philippine culture intersected with with uh, 20th century popular culture. And, and, um, and I think there's just, the story has been told many times and it's, it's been told in a very consistent way, but I, I have questions about some aspects of it. And I certainly don't, um, not going in there with a preconceived um, notion, but I, I, I just want to find out as much as possible about what happened and actually just immerse myself in as much of the culture of that time as possible as well. So I'm, I'm actually actively looking right now for any archive recordings or, or, or video from the, from the mid 1960s. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any, um, anyone who went to the concert, any, yeah. anything. So, so if anyone has that stuff, please, please. Um, yeah. Sir, uh, see, Lord Rivera produced like, uh, like in, uh, Word of the Lord. And I think he did that. Uh, uh, yes. No, I, 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 I saw that. Yes, I, I, that, that's, that. that's that's on YouTube. The TV Five docu. Yeah. Yep, I'm, I'm there. Yeah. If if we were doing this in in my home office, you'd see a, a lot of Beatles books lined up on the shelves. But mm. I, I would. Um, but yeah, no, I, that, that's I find it interesting. Um, it's it's a it's it's a topic that I'm. Mechis, you spoke sure that uh, Paul walked around Manila and he bought a Ben Cab, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. He, he bought a Ben Cab for 70 uh, pesos, yeah. Which, which, is still, which is still with him. 
That's right. That's yeah. right. It, it, Nobody it, can you, ask him about the Philippines, right? Because you know, I tweeted him and say, I, I we're sorry, no, please come back, you know, because there are only two Beatles alive and it's a dream for any of the two to yeah. just come and visit. No? Yeah. We're well, sorry. I think, um, yeah. I, and Ben Cab confirmed it with him. Uh, yeah. that, that, that he did have the um that he did buy it and it's it's in his collection probably worth a lot more than 70 pesos yeah uh, um, it, it, it's but... actually reproduced in it's reproduced in ben cub's latest book uh they got they got the photograph so you see it's it's a typical mabini art tourist thing but i mean that was the young ben cub yep. yeah yeah, yeah. That's really yeah. Cool. My my projects are basically well still writing stuff. I but I want to go online. So like uh, one of my things uh, is I want to put the entire Rizal corpus online because people talk about him all the time, but there's no access. So um, <laughs> I've arranged all the the um, correspondence and the diaries so that will come up in in a uh, in a website. I, um, I'm also moving over. Um, I've signed up with Puma Podcast to do two seasons of a podcast and hopefully to do YouTube channels sim simply because YouTube's the second biggest uh, search engine. And when you type in Philippine history, there is ve there's very little credible Philippine yeah. history there. It's mostly junk and counterfactual things. The Marcoses are the best thing since sliced bread, you know. Um, so I said, it, 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 as a historian, I have to engage in that platform because I'm, I'm well, I'm not boasting, but I'm the only branded historian you have today. So if I don't um, get into that platform, then you have given it up to crazy things so uh those those are the, those are the things we're looking at at the moment wow that's great yeah great uh, <laughs> so much to do too it much feels like, yeah. it, feels like to, it feels like we need to get back to work already yeah <laughs> sorry 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 no we're over time no, no, I'm uh, yeah. I, just, I, think, I think i'm gonna go and lie down after this so yeah it's been, it's been a, I'll, I'll probably you know get a coffee or something yeah. Yeah, but, that's true. Yeah, but it, it's gone but, really quickly. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we, time has already passed. Though. Um, I think we can guys, up already. Yeah. Um, Sir Ambeth, David, thank you so much. It was a pleasure and great learning experience. And we do hope to have um, a second show <laughs> with mm -hmm. all of you. Um, it, um, so we hope that our participants, all of you enjoyed the session. And for those of you who wish to have a certificate, um, kindly fill out the feedback form, uh, flash in the Zoom chat box in the Facebook comment sections and you can get that certificate. So that concludes our author and author. But before we end, I would yeah. like to pitch to you and invite yes. you to our upcoming webcast. So on June 19, which is tomorrow, results right. birthday, uh, we have the book club session with Sam O featuring the age of umbrage, by Jessica Zafra on June 25, Friday, 2 p.m. We have post-pandemic futures reclaiming our narrative, inclusivity and decolonization featuring Felipe De Leon Jr. and Marianne Pastor Rosses. Um, June 26 and July 3, we have another book club session with uh, Sam O featuring Broken Islands by Chriselle De Yabes. And last but not least for July, 23rd Friday at 1 p.m. We do have a Tres special um, yes. from comics to Netflix featuring Budget Tan and Mida Ramirez. So thank you again um, for those of you that joined this afternoon. And thank you, Ambeth and David, thank um, you guys. for, for thank all your you. knowledge and all the fun. We're Nick. not worthy. That's We're... great. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys.
Thank you.